Oh my word, this is really exciting. We are getting the Toyota Supra here in SA. Yes, it's going to be expensive and it's pretty much a BMW Z4, but it's got Toyota badges everywhere and it has a very special name, Supra. Now, for those of you who don't know, the Supra is actually a legendary car from Fast and Furious. I'm kidding. It's from there, yes, but it's also from crazy modders taking the power from a normal 200 and something to over 1000 bhp so 700 kilowatts sorry i'm getting my numbers confused and pretty much it was a 90s japanese legend it was giving cars like ferrari's equivalent of the day like a run for its money while costing way less cheaper Toyota could not afford to build this car on their own so they went to ask bmw for help and bmw having one of the longest records for making straight six engines decided hey we're gonna help out no problem let's share this like buddy buddy toyota and bmw sitting in a tree Ooh, you get this part you get this part yay but anyway the reception has been a bit mixed when it comes to the toyota supra because the problem is is that lots of people are saying it's too many too much bmw bits and it's more bmw than toyota but it's understandable because toyota didn't really have the like doesn't really have a two-seater coupe platform one and they don't really have a straight six engine two they have a v6 in those in that ftj cruiser or something like that fj cruiser but what i like the most about the supra is that it actually hasn't deviated too far from the concept this one the 2014 ft1 toyota ft1 obviously for those of you who want to be uh ft1 concept it's a really big plus that the supra exists and thanks to this car the ft1 it actually came to being and they actually it didn't veer too far from the concept. If you look at them side by side, they look pretty much identical. Well, apart from a few crazy bits and whatever. But the point of the matter is, is that Toyota actually is keeping the Supra name alive. Yes, it's a modern interpretation. Yes, it's not as crazy and, uh, and supercar rival, uh, rival ring. Rival ring? I'm going to write that word. I was kidding. Rival, rival ring. Rival ring as the, uh, the 90 Supra. And it's probably not as tunable as the 90 Supra. But it's still important that Toyota's keeping the name and the, the essence of the Toyota Supra alive. Yes, it's not missing a manual, which I'm highly disappointed. It's only an 8-speed manual, 8-speed automatic you'll be able to get in this car. Yes, it may not be as raucous and as lunatic and as also simple inside. Because on the inside, it's pretty much a BMW. And we all know BMWs are one of the most adjustable cars in the world. So, if you just think of it like that perspective, you're like, yes, it's not exactly a Supra, but it's a modern interpretation and it's Toyota keeping it alive. alive. Unlike, <coughs> unlike Mitsubishi, they've converted the Eclipse, which was an okayish car, and you can watch a whole bunch of videos on where the Eclipse really came from. It was an okayish car, but it converted to an SUV. Ford also did that with the Cougar, which was actually spelled Cougar, like the animal, and then now the new Cougar, the SUV, the, the flammable one. That's actually spelled Cougar, K-U-G-A. And then also with the new Puma, like the shoe, they used to have, they, it also used to be a two-seater, smallish kind of car. And now it's a SUV, okay? But then, you know, some companies are even killing off their sports brands. I mean, Mazda's not pulling an MPS, it, Mazda 3 MPS with this new one, or it's not pretty much on the cars at the moment. And if it is being built, we're not going to get one. Hello? Anyway. <coughs> Honda, uh, the S2K, S2000, we've seen, have we seen a concept? I cannot think of the one off the top of my head. I'm sure there has been a concept, but there's been nothing ever since. And that was a fantastic car. Nothing there as well. So thank you, Toyota, for keeping it alive. Thank you not for, get, for not forgetting South Africa, even though one million rand, roughly, is quite expensive for a Toyota. But at the end of the day, people buy Lexus, Lexuses, Lexi, Lexis, Lexuses, and those are like, pretty steep as well but those are fantastic cars by the way and we're going to get onto one a bit later anyway the powering here's some figures for for the toyota supra it's sharing uh, the same pretty much engine transmission and drivetrain as the z4 250 kilowatts claimed it's probably a bit more 500 newton meters of torque by eight speed automatic as i mentioned before accelerated the car from 0 to 100 in under in just over four seconds which is fantastic thank you toyota and thank you for bringing it for to south africa lexus and Porsche. Thank you so much for this. We honestly, we must salute these guys because what are they doing? They are being rebels. Porsche going so far as saying that, hey, you guys killing off the naturally aspirated engine are making mistakes. Oh, how much SAS must you have? Actually, 
it's strange coming from a company that's been owned by another company that used to have diesel gate scandals. Anyway, moving along. Let me just explain why these both these cars are important. Well, let me explain which cars are important firstly. This, the Porsche 718 Cayman GT4. Now, yes, it's a lengthy name. Bear with the name. But here's why this car is important. It has a flat six, naturally aspirated, four-liter engine. Let me just rewind. Did you miss that word? That beautiful word, naturally aspirated. Naturally aspirated. Say it with me. Naturally aspirated. <sighs> Pretty much it's that engine breathing on its own. It doesn't need any assistance like an oxygen tank or electric compressor or a standard turbocharger or supercharger or any electricity for any, uh, whatever, for instant talk. <coughs> instant talk's good, but on an electric car. We'll get into that in another episode. Natural aspirating engines are important. One, because they, are, they make a fantastic sound. Two, because they make a fantastic sound. And three, they sound much nicer than turbocharged engines. Now, for those of you who've never driven a 718 Cayman, the standard one at least, um, or the 718 Boxster, um, standard one again, um, for those of you who haven't, the car sounds dull and uninspiring. It has a flat four turbocharged motor. Yes, it's quite powerful compared to the flat six of previous generation, but it's good, not good enough in the sound department. Not good enough at all. Sounds like a Subaru. Yeah, Subaru sounds good, never mind. That's a bad analogy. Ignore that. Lexus, who is owned by Toyota, has made this. Now, we all know this looks like an RCF with a couple of wings on it. Stop right there. How dare you think that? We already know the RCF has a fantastic 5-liter V8 in it, in it, the standard one. <coughs> but now they have the track edition. Literally, same 5-liter V8, but upgraded to 350 kilowatts of power. Okay? And a deep growl soundtrack. So it'll make a hell of a noise. Compared to its smaller straight six BMW M3 making what sounds like a trapped bee in a class. You get what I'm trying to say? This car sounds like thunder and lightning or having a fight. Wait, but lightning is just the, s the noise. The sound? No, thunder is the sound, lightning. But guys, these cars, we need to salute them. These are non-turbocharged, non not supercharged. So that means it's just all natural. It just breathes air in and spits power and noise out. And that means the sound is not as subdued as turbo, smaller turbocharged engines. Because, well, smaller turbocharged engines are smaller and they're turbocharged. And therefore, they've got less pistons firing or just a smaller explosion in the combustion chamber. Hence, making it a lower noise. Or, well, not as an exciting noise. You can enhance the sound, but it's then you're just enhancing the fuel consumption or decreasing the fuel consumption. And other people with money buy these cars, the Lexus and the Porsche. Buy Lexus first. I like it better. <laughs> the new BMW X6 is lit. Like when I say lit, it, it's literally lit. We'll get into it now. It's a pretty much an SUV coupe. First of all, the term SUV coupe is already obnoxious. You're already full of yourself. If you need to buy a car that is, an, that is supposed to be functional and sporty looking at the same time, what? That's called an estate, buddy. Where have you been? Buy an estate. Just buy an estate. Oh, wow. Yeah, right. I forgot. South Africans don't buy estates. That's why we don't have any. <sighs> South Africa, I love you, but please buy an estate. Save a panda. Buy an estate. That'll be a good advert. The X6 is obnoxious. You know, the X6, the X4, the X2 sort of uh, obnoxious kind of vehicles. Because the thing is, if you want a practical, practical car or a high-seater car, you buy an SUV. But who in the right mind decides, like, ooh, I want an SUV that costs more expensive but is less practical, but looks faster but isn't? <sighs> what? <laughs> Literally makes no sense. Anyway. This new BMW X6 is for you if you are that person. And it has nostrils that are lit. Can you not? The kidney curls have light bulbs in them that light up. You, it's obviously an optional extra. Thankfully, you know, it's not standard on all models. Because uh, first of all, having a German car that actually has something standard on it will be amazing. And second of all, 
this would be ridiculous. So when I see this person, I'm going to look at that person and give him a thumbs up. He spends about 30 to 40k on this extra. I'm assuming it'll be that because I'm not too sure. Uh, BMW, I don't know who to talk to at BMW about this. If you work at BMW, send me a message. Comments below, comments below. Anyway, <laughs> the new Mazda 3. Okay, so this is more serious news. And why I'm talking about this car is because it looks fantastic. And two, it's actually a car that like, people watching this video can buy because I don't expect Bill Gates to be watching this video. If you are, dude, say I am Bill Gates and I approve this message. This is uh, Mazda's uh, new uh, car. This is what it looks like. It looks fantastic. Um, it's a bit weird at the back. Like, no, no, the actual back looks fantastic. This part, this, see, do you see how big it is? It's like, it's like, like a, like, it's really big. It's, it's called a C-pillar. The C-pillar is actually rather large, in my opinion. I'm sure it's for structural reasons. I love the fact that Mazda mostly has function over form. But then again, they make function look fantastic. Wow. Because, I don't know about you guys, but these things look incredible. And the great thing is the facelifted Mazda 2 is going to also have that new, mean, aggressive face. Not a, actually, it already had it, sort of really had it, but now it's going to be like, I'm a small little car. Like the Mazda, you just imagine the Mazda 2 and the Mazda 3 walking to a club. And the Mazda 3 will be like, and then the Mazda 2 will be like, you feel me? Anyway, <laughs> pricing. <laughs> pricing starts from from just under 360k and goes uh, up all the way to 480, around about there. Um, for the two liter, that's uh, the top of the range is gonna be the only two liter option, that's the 480 model. Um, the rest are all gonna have a 1.5 liter engine, um, 88 kilowatts, uh, 150 newton meters of torque, Skyactiv G engine, I'm not too sure what it is. No, I do know what it is, I just don't wanna bore you guys. Um, Oh, two liter engine is going to be 121 kilowatts. Um, and Mazda, make an MPS. Did you see what Honda did? Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyundai. Honda did a hot, Honda did a hot hatch as well. But Hyundai, look, they bring the i30 into South Africa. Check it in the last video, guys, if you missed it. I lose my mind there. It's fantastic. But i30N, it needs a competitor, um, Mazda. Make a, you can do it. We believe in you. Mazda 3, hot, hot version. MPS, come on. Revive the name. Or Mazda Speed, as they call it in Japan. Okay. That's the last bit for Mazda. On to Mercedes. Mercedes, we all know, is, has expanded into pretty much every market you can think of. They have a truck, they have a bus, they have a bucky, this bucky, which we're gonna talk about in a bit. They have a coupe, and they're expanding now into sort of operating with the GLB. Mercedes X-Class is, is it on the chopping board? With only 16,000 uh, units sold from its, uh, from its inception in two years ago, in two years ago, wow, English, in uh, two years ago, so you could almost say, uh-oh, what's gonna happen? But seriously, why I actually bring this up is because the thing is, when it came out as a concept, it was pretty much, wow, it, but it was almost like yesterday that we were really getting excited about this car because it actually looked really fantastic, and the concepts were out of the water explosion, explosive, like compared to any other Bucky, this was really deviating from the standard boxy shape kind of bucky. The problem with that is concepts are expensive and you can it's only one unit you're making, whereas standard production cars end up looking like this. Uh, uh, you know, compared to the concept, just, you know, and uh, like, ooh, and uh, ooh, uh, eh, ooh. You know, it's like, what is happening? How, like, and the thing is, just because of that, BM, like Mercedes is actually the sales aren't doing as well because you hyped it up so much and guess what now you make it based off a Navara now once again it's back to the Toyota and BMW story where they're sharing costs and all that kind of stuff but look Toyota came very close to the FT1 and yes it was a bit more expensive but hey we were excited for it it's going to be it's not going to sell masses but it's going to sell it's going to sell relatively um, like yeah it's in that right bracket the problem is, is that Mercedes mocked this as a luxurious bucky the other problem is it's based off a non-luxurious bucky. The Nissan Navara is a great capable off-roader. And yes, with its coil over, what was it coils, whatever? Coil over suspension, all that kind of nonsense. It's a more comfortable option than the Ranger and the, the Hilux. However, the Ranger and the Hilux have stepped up their game so much that they were able to actually be relatively comfortable at a lower cost. 
I mean, just look at the VW Amarok. The VW Amarok was also a sort of a luxury, not really marketed as one, luxurious, but it didn't compete with those two. It didn't even compete with the Isuzu KB. KB? Yeah. KB. Because at the end of the day, it's not, there's not really a, there's not really a market for more premium, luxurious buckies. Even though the VW is fa much, fa well, when I say much, I mean faster than the Hilux or the Ranger. But at the end of the day, you when you buy a bucky, you don't want to be setting zero to 100 times. You don't want to be on a track burning it out. That's why I'm, I'm actually glad Mercedes didn't even make an AMG version. How mad would that be? Wow. <laughs> X. What? X63? X63 AMG. Hmm. Interesting. Anyway, there's been speculation that the X class is on the chopping block. Now, we're not too sure why, because the thing is Mercedes I did have to invest a bit of money, but the problem is the result that came up with, that it came up with was actually rather underwhelming. I've been in an X, cl X class, and to be honest with you, the capabilities were Navara, were, were just like the Navara, um, even though Mercedes, the Mercedes driver at the time would not admit it to me, but the quality of the materials was bloody awful. <laughs> I'm like, no. If I'm paying for an extra 200k compared to an equivalent Hilux or a Ranger, Hilux or Ranger, yeah, Hilux or Ranger, and I'm getting as cheap plastics or sometimes even worse. I've been in a Hilux and I've been in a Ranger, and quite frankly, I'm like, I'd rather have those if they are costing, if, th if those are the prices. And it's honestly, but then again, Mercedes, you're paying for the badge, and it's not going to cut it this time, Mark, unfortunately. So 16,000 units worldwide in two years, not exactly the return of the investment that you guys were hoping for. But hey, if you guys can maybe improve the interior, but I'm sure it's improved from the last time I was sitting in it. I mean, that was two years ago. Point is, there's no term, there's no need for a luxury bucky. They all pretty much do the job. They're functional. They are more functional workhorses. And the f your sales figure sort of proves it. We, we don't have sales for South African uh, units, unfortunately, because Mercedes doesn't report it, but I'm sure it wouldn't be competing with the likes of even the nearest competitor, the Nissan Navara. Anyway, guys, tell me what you think in the comments below. Like and subscribe, guys, that'll be fantastic. I mean, if you guys actually stuck it out this far without skipping the video, yes, my voice can be monotonous. I try to keep it exciting, so just like it. Thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing. Comment below, tell me what you think of this whole, um, you know, Mercedes X-Class uh, fiasco. Um, do you think it's just purely on sales or do you think that there's something in the works between the Nissan and, Nissan and Mercedes relationship at this point in time? In my opinion, I think it's more based on that, but sales is a contributing factor and uh, it's probably getting too expensive for Mercedes to continue producing the X-Class. So let me know what you in, uh, let me know what you think in the comments. Just keyboard warriors, go at it. Bada, 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 bada. Hashtag SACON News in Facebook. Bada, 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 bada. Share this post on your WhatsApp, please. Bada, 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 bada. And I'll see you guys in the next one.